Welcome to Invincible Teams, a podcast for team leaders and business owners who are tired of dealing with office drama and politics, high turnover, and teams not meeting their potential. We know that team leaders and business owners like you are pretty much always under pressure to get the most out of your teams. And we also know that most teams only operate at about 58% of their actual potential, and we've got the tools and training to make that number keep going up. We believe that every team should reach their potential and that if we get intentional, our teams can become invincible. Hey, welcome to the Invincible Teams podcast. Excited today to share with you an interview that I did with my friend James Walden. Uh, James is uh, a friend of mine for several years now, and he's just one of the best that I know about caring about a team and leading uh, with relationships, not just positional leadership, but uh, with the way that he cares about people. We talk about that. We talk about some of the just crazy things about the remote work world that we find ourselves in, uh, how we can better balance work and life, and just what it means for people to, to really care about the people that they lead, the teams that they lead, uh, and how that impacts everything bottom line to uh to retention and job satisfaction enjoy this interview with my friend james walden all right james welcome to invincible teams podcast how's it going hey ryan it's glad to glad to be here it's going great yeah well i'm excited to have you here um for those listening i've known james for several years now um and super excited to have him on the podcast i i don't know do you remember the first time that you and I like legitimately hung out? Um, I remember um, it was a poolside party and uh, you had on some really sweet sunglasses <laughs> and you were, you were fresh. I think you were fresh on the, sh- on the shores of the United States. And uh, um, that's, that's the first time I remember meeting you. Okay. Well, um, the first time I remember legitimately like hanging out, like getting some, some one-on-one good conversation in was, uh, we had breakfast one morning, uh, very early. And, and I remember, so I was in this thing where I'm like, okay, I'm new here. I'm going to get to know some people. This dude seems cool. Uh, so I walk up and, uh, I was like, Hey man, I'd love to, to get breakfast or grab lunch or coffee or something. When is good for you? And at the time you worked in a different city that you had to be at your job um, fairly early. And so you said, well, I mean, it's going to be early. And you know, I was like, early, no problem. What, whatever you just tell me. And you're like, how's five (laughs) 30. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I'm like, Hey, I, I committed to this. I'm in. Right. Like, so, so we, uh, I remember that we met, uh, at Bob's grill and had yeah. breakfast, yeah. uh, super early one morning and you know, the rest, <laughs> as they say is history. So I, yeah. uh, I appreciate you being here though. And, um, and it's 1145, uh, <laughs> middle of the day, just, just for anybody that's late, keeping track yeah. late in the day. Yeah. It's late in the day. For, yeah. It's a <laughs> Yeah, the five the five thirty breakfasts are so great because well you you can you can read a lot because you can read how they respond to that first of all yeah. and then do they actually show up even if they said they're going to be there which is you know yeah which for me I, I get Bob's breakfast either way so I you know it's sure. fine. if you want to show up you can if you don't that's fine too well um, I, I am excited to have you on the podcast so why don't you start though by introducing yourself a little bit tell people who you are sure where you're from, what you do, um, and whatever else you want to introduce yourself with. Yeah. Uh, my wife McKinley and I, uh, have two kids. We've lived in Conway for about 10 years and, uh, we moved here for, uh, McKinley to go to graduate school and we never left. And I'm a, right now I'm a software engineer at a local, um, marketing data company. And, um, I used to work at a telecommunications company in Little Rock, um, before that. And, um, I'm also, um, a, a directional elder, what we call a directional elder at a local church. So, um, and I, uh, I also, I also, uh, lead worship at that, at that church. That's one of my other, probably my only hobby that I do is, is playing guitar and playing drums. Um, so it sounds like you're currently taking applications for more things to do. Is that, <laughs> yeah, right. Sure. Is that yeah. What I gather. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, you know, as if, as if raising kids and, you know, 
right now isn't enough to have to yeah. do. Oh yeah. Yeah. As we're on this zoom call right now, I can see in the bottom corner of your screen is actually not your name. It's your son's name. Uh, so <laughs> he's doing some online school uh, recently here. Yeah. Uh, it's just easier for the teacher that way. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, so, you know, I wanted to have you on um, today because I wanted to talk about um, the difference between positional leadership and mm. relational leadership. And, and I wanted to talk to you about that because I think that's something that you do very well, uh, regardless of if you are in any sort of uh, positional, you know, leadership uh, authority. So, yeah, talk to me about that for a minute. Like, what do you think? Um, why do you think relational leadership is so important? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I explained I, I've served in the in ministry roles, um, and then also served in in corporate roles. Uh, so, my previous job, um, I was in lower level, middle level management, um, and I had a, a team of about eight people, and we were split between three states. And so, the way that the way that I decided. I was going to lead was because you, you have two options when basically everybody's remote, you have mm-hmm. two options. You can either, you can either trust or you can control. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you can, you can check their you know status on I am or all, uh, all the time, or you can just trust, just lead with trust. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and I have found, you know, since we're talking about relational leadership, I have found that you, you at least need a strong presence that's going to lead with trust on a team and, mm-hmm. And, and you, you said it a second ago, but one of the really cool things is it doesn't have to be, <laughs> it can be anybody on the, on the team. And mm-hmm. I think the whole team benefits if, yeah. if, if they can help establish that culture that we are going to trust each other out of the gate. Like you're one of the hard things. So for a while, um, one of the roles I had at the telecom company was I was in internal audit and it was very difficult for me to have the mindset of um, this, this process is broken until I prove that it's working or you are guilty until I prove you're innocent. Right. Mm. Cause for me, it's so much easier to say, I trust you or it, it easier, not a cop out, but easier in like something in me has to, has to operate this way that I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to trust you that you're doing everything right. Mm-hmm. And and so auditing was very difficult for me, but so, so the team that was eight people across three different States, I just decided, Hey, I, I trust you. And they'll, they'll, you know, they, they would ask me like, can I work from home on Tuesday? And I'll say, how would I know? You know, like <laughs> how, like if you're worried about that, then I've got something that I need to fix. You know, huh. if, if you really think that I wouldn't trust you to, you know, to take care of yourself and take care of the work. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of eases the, the tension and okay. You know, um, I'm I, almost like freedom. Like, okay, I'm free to, I, that's one less thing I have to worry about that, that my leader is, mm. is, is always, you know, <laughs> measuring at a very finite level, trying to make sure that the, sure. Uh, yeah. Well, that's so. interesting. Like right now, um, because, you know, when you were doing that job, we were not in the middle of right. the crazy, you know, coronavirus pandemic and, and the, what has become a huge shift to a remote work culture right. for a lot of companies. Right. So yeah. you were doing remote work before remote work was yeah. cool. Right. Right. <laughs> and, uh, right. Back when uh, it was a perk. Yeah. It used right. to be a perk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what have you seen? I mean, I, I'm with you. I would rather err on the side of trust, right. Over control, like you said. Um, but inevitably yeah. some people will take advantage of that. Right. Sure. Um, so, have you had that happen? What do you do when that happens? Um, how do you continue to lead? How do you not pull back your trust from your team if someone violates it? Speak to that for a second. Um, yeah, I, I haven't. So I've been lucky. And so when I was, when I had the team of, of eight, um, I will say, I think it, I think you can't only have, um, you can't only have people like me that are, that are always mm. trust mm. and, and, aren't looking at the spreadsheets every day to see what the output, is, you know, because, and so I was yeah. lucky enough that, that the, there were, um, my leader was, was a good uh, balance of that. And so hmm. I, I think that was the, that was the huge benefit that he, of me being on his team was to help him kind of solve that, that need for people to feel, um, you know, it's weird in a corporate environment, but it's, it's what I have to do is I want people to feel loved sure, and, and heard. And so even my, my metrics 
and it, it gets <laughs> it gets kind of bizarre. I haven't done this, but it would be very bizarre to put your quarterly goals as you know. I want Tracy to feel loved this quarter, right. yeah, <laughs> and to yeah. feel her. You know, when, when it's no, we need to we need to hit this financial target. We need to hit this you know number of of you know project completions and uh, so yeah. I so I, that's why I think you have to have a you have to have a balance. So luckily, mm-hmm. when I was on that team, he was the I guess the, the hammer that would, that would keep, keep everybody moving. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to, to talk, um, you know, since we, since I have done ministry, um, work, it's kind of a a shepherd mentality, right? Like I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm, I can help protect this flock. I don't really know where we're going (laughs) or, or, uh, but, but once you're in this circle, like the flock's okay. And so, and that's good. You want the flock to be healthy and, um, but you also need other people to, you know, fight off the wolves and to move the herd somewhere. Um, Yeah. Do you think that when, you know, you're talking about the, your supervisor um, or your Mm -hmm. boss, your leader, whenever you got added to that team, do you think, was that intentional or did, did it just get, was it lucky that it worked out that way? I think it was lucky that it worked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was intentional. Um, because I, b- b- well, and because I think, I think that was, I probably f- felt the need for that to, to help guide the culture in a certain way. And so I kind of morphed to like make that happen, but, but that's easy. You know, we're talking about Enneagram, like I, I'm at Enneagram nine, like straight up and that, like, so that's very easy. That's very easy for me. Right. Like yeah. I, I make friends very quickly and I don't lose them. Yeah. And so, and so I think it's good to have somebody, it was, it was good for that team. Um, to have somebody on it that's that's just going to make friends with everybody. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. uh but in a very but in a you know not in an in a an agenda way, you know, it's mm-hmm. uh, so, but and the other Ryan the other thing is like in in a corporate environment it's when you're held to quarterly goals. Mm-hmm. Um like I have this deep conviction that if you're, you know, you'll boost loyalty if if I love you, or my team, regardless of where you are on the team, if I love you and I serve you and I sacrifice mm-hmm. for you and I show up for you, I show yeah. up to to the to the birthday to the happy hours after mm-hmm. work. I show up to the the I donate to something you care about. I show right. up. Um, then I think that drives results. Now it yeah. might not drive results next week, but right. if somebody but if somebody needs to stay late on a, on a Friday night to get something done. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, there's more buy-in to do that versus, well, it's five o'clock. I'm shutting down the computer. It's like, no, you know, James has been there for me and, and James needs help and I'm going to be there for James. Yeah. Um, I love that. It's like you're, you're building up relational credit, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, so that when there needs to be a withdrawal, you have something in the account, right? Um, and, and you know, maybe that's, cold to turn it into a formula like that. But I think that's how, I mean, that's one way that those kinds of relationships work, right? The other way is that you have just, here's the rules and you can try to mandate it and, and create a hard culture like that. Um, which I mean, I think everybody knows like eventually that wears people down. It wears people down. Yeah. Um, I agree. I love, yeah, I love the idea of like building loyalty, like you said, is really good too, um, because that that really does have a long term dividend for teams. I think, just like what you said, it may not be next week, but right. it will happen, right? And it's also, um, you know, so so if 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 you have a team of of um, I'm trying to think of a generic job position, like an analyst, you have three analyst ones on your mm-hmm. team, and and three analyst twos, and on you know you're looking at excel and well analyst one only output this much and analyst three did this much mm-hmm. what's what's wrong you know they're like right. they're all machines why aren't they all producing the same yeah. <laughs> but to have, yeah to have somebody step in and say well you know analyst three robot son got divorced and moved mm. back into the house with their with right. the grandchild and it's probably been very uh distracting and yeah. Um, and so maybe that's why the output is less yeah. and maybe, you know, <laughs> maybe we need to, um, be gracious and come alongside and see if yeah. anybody else has availability instead of, you know, scolding analyst three robot. That you're, <laughs> yeah. Um, Dude, that's interesting that you say that because, um, I mean, I, that's a problem that could be a problem that would pop up in any given 
time, right? right. But now to go yeah. back to the remote work, yeah. work from home world, those kinds of things have a it's much critical. bigger impact, you yeah. know, on, on people than they did even before, because now not only is, you know, their kid and their grandkid at home, they are also there with them all the time. Uh, yes. And, you know, you bring that up. So yesterday I actually wrote um, a new blog post for our website. It's not on the website yet, but I wrote it yesterday. I think it'll be out by the time this podcast airs though. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things that I talked about was that one of the things that has changed is that work and life have become more intertwined than they've ever been before. And I think leaders need to be hyper aware of that, Yeah, especially yeah. when they've got people working from home. Yeah. It, how have you yeah, seen I'm that you. play out uh, with teams that you're currently on? Yeah. Uh, the team, yeah, the team I'm on now has been very hyper aware and, and gracious and understanding. And, and for me, it's um, I, I try, I try my best to be, fully present with whoever's right in front of me. And so this is kind of, this has, you know, dumped coffee on the motherboard of my system. Cause <laughs> I like, and I also have hierarchies of like, if my, like my kids, my wife and kids mm -hmm. take precedent over other things. And so sure. now if, if we're talking and my wife comes up, I, so I, I can't, you know, I can't, <laughs> how, do, how do I be fully present and fully loving to both people at the same time? And, yeah. I, and, and so to have to stiff arm children at home, and to me, it feels like saying you're not important right now. Right. Um, when, whenever we were, it was when we could compartmentalize things, I could say, you're, you know, I'm giving you everything I've got right now. And so when I yeah. come home, I can look at my kids and say, I'm giving you everything that I've got. Mm -hmm. I'm not distracted. I'm fully present. And so now I'm always distracted and never fully present, hmm. yeah. uh, regardless of where I am. And it, and I think it's not, I don't want to say it's unloving, but it's just, it's not um, optimal. And it's not, <laughs> it's not sure. effective, you know, if you can't. So what do you think it looks like? What do people need to do? What do leaders need to do for their teams, right? In order for people to be able to be more present wherever they are, whether it's with a coworker in a Zoom meeting or whether it's yeah. with their family at their son's t-ball game, like what do we all need to be doing right now? That's a really good question. Yeah, I, I think um, something I something I've done, which has helped, um, is is taking a couple steps back on notifications. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I spend lunchtime with my kids, and normally I would have Slack on my phone just in case I need to know if something urgent's come up. But I've but I've turned that off, yeah. and that's and that's uh, that's obvious, obviously. But but I think basically having hard hard you know blocks of time that uh, that that you don't um, you don't let seep into each other, and and yeah. um, you, you know, luckily I have I have an office that's that's detached, but um, but the kids can still find me, and so sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but it it would be ideal if there was a way to, or if if you could set up boundaries in a way to say from eight to 11, do not disturb. Like yeah. I'm off, you know, <laughs> I have to be present and it's what's best for our family. I have to get resources for our family. And for me to do that well, I'm, I need no distractions. And then, uh, and you know, of course you got to, the tricky tough part conversation is, though, man. it's a tough conversation. Well, and, and it's tough from the work side too, right? Because uh, it's not like expectations are, <laughs> we still have goals we have to meet. And so, yeah. you know, if you have to just find time at night and weekends, um, mm. you know, weekends are, yeah. are, are, are yeah, available I mean, now where maybe we didn't used to have to use weekends, but now we do. Sorry, so that's me. what I was going to ask, like nights and weekends. Do you find yeah. it more difficult to protect those times? Oh yeah. 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 For sure. Well, and, and I, I do find it difficult and, and luckily, you know, um, the team I'm on now is, is encouraging of, Hey, you need, you need to find ways to, to keep mentally healthy. So like take mm -hmm. time, take mm -hmm. time to do things that are refreshing. And, um, and it's not like I'm, I'm not working at, you know, all weekend, every weekend, but it, it's just, I think right now, at least it's necessary hmm. to log more hours, um, hmm. on Sunday afternoon or on Saturday morning or just to make up, you know, to make up for distracted time mm -hmm. during the, yeah, I see. we call it, we call it work-life balance time. Right. You know, we have like, we have a note, we can set our status in Slack to work-life balance, which is, which is helpful just to say, Hey, by the way, huh. I'm on work, I'm on work-life balance right now. And so if I don't immediately get back to. So is that, 
like a, a third option between work and not working? Is that what that is? Uh, yeah. Well, between like active and, and inactive, you could have, oh. you could have, um, or any status you want. I mean, but yeah, yeah. But yeah you can have work life balance and just to say, just to tell people I'm, my computer's on, right. but I'm, but I'm tending to childcare or to elder sure. care. Or, yeah. Um, that's really interesting. I like that. Um, especially for a team that is like really yeah. committed to the remote thing and maybe using yes. something like Slack. It's yeah. just kind of like, um, you know, I've seen in office systems like where, you know, you're trying to, if you're on a focus task, maybe there's, I've seen offices with different like flags or little things on yeah. the desk. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, I'm in yeah. deep focus mode. Yeah. Please don't bother me unless it's an emergency. It's kind of the yeah. same thing, except yeah. in the, the digital online world. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. I haven't uh, the, heard anybody talk about that. The other, the other thing that I gave myself permission to do this week was just to close down email and, and I am just close it down. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. There was um, somebody's, I think it was Donald Miller or somebody's podcast talked about scuba diving and how like, and I, this totally re- related to me um, how, you know, you spend all this time getting the scuba gear on. And then like, once you finally get in the water, if like, <laughs> if you get a ding or like a notification on your phone, you're like, you got to go all the way back up to the surface yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and then you got to dive down again and see how far you can go. So if I just shut it off and I can go all the way down to the yeah. bottom and do the, do the deep, the deep work I need to do. Cause you know, um, if you remember back in the there. old days when we used to travel, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and specifically when we would fly on airplanes, um, I, you know, I think one of the things that I honestly, I wish wasn't a thing, mm-hmm. uh, is Wi-Fi on airplanes. You know, airplanes used to be yeah. kind of this protected yeah. space where you yeah. couldn't get those notifications. You couldn't access your email. Like yeah. you were in this unreachable place, <laughs> yes. um, which I think is is just a little bit of a microcosm of, yeah. you know, the, the problem that we face now with this yeah. remote, online, always available mm-hmm. workforce. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when all this first went down and everybody was moving remote, I think one of the big fears that people had was that people were just going to slack off and not work enough. But studies have shown that the number of hours on average that have worked has actually gone up, not down, right? Yeah. I, and I think it's because we're addicted, you know? Um, and so I, I wish that more people would do stuff like what you're talking about of of going down, putting on the scuba gear, mm-hmm. gear and going down and, and turning off email, yeah. turning off Slack, you know, I've made a practice at the end of my day of not, um, like when I am done, I yeah. literally shut down my computer. Yeah. Right. I think that's good. Uh, that way I can't I run into that, that too. Right. Where I never, I never, I never do the, you know, work day shutdown routine. And so I'm, I'm, yeah. my computer's still open from the day before and I have no idea what I was working on, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Not I'll tell you one of the funny ones is uh, for my work phone, I use yeah. Google voice and uh-huh. uh, on my phone, I can program, you know, certain apps to not work after certain yeah. times, right? With, yes. with iPhones and stuff, you can do the, I forget what it's called, but it's uh, basically, you know, it's only certain apps work. Yeah. And so yeah. I made it to where Google voice shuts off at five o'clock. And it's funny because I've been on phone calls with, people like work calls and, and the connection just stops at five. No. Uh, and, uh, and no, I have to talk like, to you tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to be like, Hey, sorry, this is just kind of a rule I put in place for me. I'm, I'm done working right now. Like, uh, which I know doesn't work for everybody in every situation. And I have that luxury being the, you know, business owner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But man, I, I'm a big fan of having those hard <laughs> boundaries and, but it's about protecting that time. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And I think just as intentional as we have always been about scheduling meetings and scheduling, you know, tasks for work right now, one of the things that we have to be equally intentional about is scheduling personal stuff. Just like what you were saying is is blocking off chunks of time. Otherwise, if we're just on autopilot, things that we, you know, are already doing for work will just naturally take over that time without us even trying. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I haven't done that well, but I I need to, I need to do that better. (laughs) Put it on the calendar, even just go for a walk when it's 70 degrees and sunshine. Yes. 
Um, yeah, you know, one thing I've been doing the last uh, couple weeks, whenever the weather's been decent, is if I can take a walk while I'm taking a call, even mm, like I, yeah. I was on a Zoom call yesterday and I was walking around in my neighborhood while I was doing it, just because, my goodness, like I'm in my it's, home it's office awesome. here and it's like, <laughs> Now I like it, but when it's every day, all it's day. starting to feel like a prison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I don't, don't want to go there today. I got to get out and do something. Right. Um, and yeah. so I've been doing the kind of walks with, with lots of calls this week, which has been great, but that's, um, man, that's kind of a long departure from where we started on the relational leadership <laughs> thing, but it's, it's really, really good stuff. I do want to ask you though, like, Oh. What do you think, um, people that are really good at relational leadership, what do you think that looks like for different people? Um, and um, how does that impact teams? Um, what does it look like for different people? Well, yeah, so how, for, how would you describe relational leadership when you see it? Um, I, I think people, I think there's, there's uh, joking around on the team, but, but, in a productive environment. See, not, mm. so it's not, it's not only joking, but if, sure. if, if people can, if they're comfortable enough with each other to kind of make fun of themselves around each other mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and crack lighthearted jabs, I think that's probably a good sign that, uh, of mm. course that you know, that's not, I can just see like a naturally positional leader saying like, okay, make fun of, got it. Make fun of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not what I'm saying to do. Like, <laughs> it's like the episode um, of the office where Michael sets up the roast. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> does not go well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you can just sense it where, well, and hopefully, you know, the, the ultimate goal in, in, in that is engagement. I mean, that's what you want, right? You want, mm. you want your team to be engaged and you want them to be excited about being on that team mm. and being loyal. So I think if you have a team where people are, are in, and I'm thinking engagement, you know, from the corporate world, we have, quarterly surveys. <laughs> right. What's our number right. now? So if, if people are, if, if they're not looking for other jobs actively and they <laughs> enjoy the work they do right. and they, they, they respect each other and they sacrifice for each other. Yeah. Then I think relational leadership is happening one way mm. or another, either within yeah. the team itself or, um, or the leaders modeling that. And if people, I think if, if people volunteer for, if people absorb blame mm. frequently and if they volunteer for, for difficult projects. Yeah. That's um, huge. Then I think that's, yeah, I think it's happening there. Hmm. So you said um, something about a leader modeling it. What do you think, you know, for, for small or medium sized businesses, maybe it's the business owner for larger companies, organizations, maybe it's team leaders, division heads, things like that. But what do you think the leader's responsibility is in encouraging relational leadership among the, their team, the different people that they lead. So I think that the leader should, um, and this is what I was kind of what I was hinting at before. Somebody's got to be strict on the goals and the numbers, you know, especially in the, in the corporate in smaller business, you might have a little different timeline mm-hmm. than a quarterly. We've got to hit this quarterly target or else, sure. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you probably have more leeway, but if the, if the leader's not modeling, serving his, his or her people well, then he needs to find somebody that will Mm -hmm. and, and get that because I don't think, you know, if, um, and I think they have to be willing to, um, if, if they're willing to find somebody that will provide relational leadership, oftentimes this is bad, but it's true. The the unifying factor is going to be, um, the, how do I say this? I can't, I'll just say (laughs) it. It's good. It's going to be like complaining about the leader. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so almost like if that's what draws this team together and, and here's the deal though, if the leader is okay with that, who cares? Hmm, right? Like if they're willing, if they're willing to be the, the sacrifice for, well, if, if it takes, you know, uh, <laughs> complaining about me to bring you yeah. guys together where you're friends and you sacrifice for each other and you're in the trenches, yeah. then who cares? And if you're self-aware enough to say that and to be okay with that, then I think it's great. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, that's so funny. And this, yeah. it's so random. I don't even know if you'll know this reference or not, but do you remember the old movie from like, oh gosh, probably early mid nineties called major pain? Yeah. 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 With, with Damon Wayans. Right. <laughs> um, I remember that was his exact strategy. I don't know why I just thought of that movie. I promise I have not seen it anytime recently, yeah. but I remember that was his strategy. He was this drill sergeant who uh, was intentionally, 
like so rough on these guys because he wanted them to unify around yeah. the fact that he was a jerk to them, be. right? <laughs> um, and he was also seeing who would rise up in that to, yeah. you know, to be kind of the figurehead for that team. If, yeah. if he was the coach, then he was looking for a captain, right? Which yes. is kind of what it sounds like you're saying right yeah. now is yes. it's okay to be the coach that holds people to the fire, but yes. you might need a captain to lead them and, and support them. Um, and, uh, and I think that's, I think that's valid right now. I, I think agree with that, it, that yeah. can go overboard. Right. Yeah. And, it can become toxic if everybody just absolutely hates the person. Yeah. And, I, and that's why I was hesitant to say it. I didn't want to make it sound toxic. I just, you know, sometimes that's the easiest yeah. <laughs> unifier is sure. uh, it's the one thing you all have in common. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, you're going to hate this part probably, but uh, I think relational leadership is something you do well. How have you got to that point? Like what has, what has helped you become that way? What influences, what lessons have you learned along the way to get to what I am uh, objectively judging as you being good at relational leadership? <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. that is, that's honoring. Thank you, Ryan. Um, I, so, so I don't know if I already said it, but I, I'm an Enneagram nine. I, I have said it. I'm an Enneagram nine. And so like, um, unifying a team and keeping peace mm-hmm. and making everyone's voice heard and respecting like that's just water for that's so easy oh, for yeah. me it's not something that I know how to do or how to like strategize to get it done I just I can just do it yeah um, and it's and I don't realize I'm doing it um, hmm. and it's funny because I'll oftentimes I'll, I'll find like how did like how did we become friends like we've only talked twice but yeah you know like, <laughs> yeah I feel like we're close friends um, and, you know, I, I think the trust thing too is, so the, if you can, if you can trust people and if you, um, some other things I've done is tried to, I've tried to do tangible, um, like it, it, at my former job, I would host, um, what I, what we just called good news breakfast hmm. every Friday. Hmm. Um, we would stand around our cubicles and eat donuts I bought from Julie's. And, and we could, we were only allowed to say good news. Nice. So somebody's having a baby, uh, somebody's going on a trip that weekend, somebody got a big project done. And so we would all just kind of stand around and it be, and accidentally it became this, a thing where we, you know, and, and, uh, and, and that wasn't intentional. That was just, I'm going to eat donuts on Fridays yeah. and I'm good. <laughs> and I'm going to buy a dozen cause it's cheaper. Yeah. And, something you know and i would rather talk about good news than bad news yeah yeah and so let's celebrate those things and then before you know it uh we're encouraging each other in our whole floor and now it's beyond your team now your whole floor uh, you know because i would walk around i would walk around with a dozen chocolate donuts and shove them in someone's face and say (laughs) hey would you like a donut you know and and the you know oftentimes they'll say no and i'm like okay would you what about this donut you know and so just like right um, and so that was one thing. Another thing is just like very small. Like I used to, this is not good, but I used to, our cafeteria, <laughs> our cafeteria had really good cookies. They would make cookies on Monday morning and they'd sell them all week and they were just really good. So almost every day, sorry, McKinley, almost every day I would go down to the cafeteria and of course I'm not going to buy one cookie, right? I would buy six cookies and, and I would once again, like, drop them off at every member of my team's desk Mm. and not say anything. It's just, Hey, I bought some cookies. There's one on your desk or, you know, I would just leave it on their desk. If they want to eat it. Great. If they want to throw it in the garbage. Great. Yeah. But, but I think what I was communicating was um, I remembered you Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I, I care about you and here's a gift and it's a cookie and it's not a big deal, but if you can, and like, Mm. you know, but, but it's, but it's an inclusive way to, um, just a simple, like, Hey, here's a, here's a, cookie. <laughs> sure. Yeah. There's no expectations. I just, I care about you in a, and it's, that's, what's funny in, in a corporate environment. It's like, you can't hug people mm. and you can't say things like, I really care about you. And, and <laughs> I'm thankful that I'm thankful we get to work together. Even right. that, which is very mild for me yeah, can be kind of strange in a corporate environment, but sure. Or you drop a, you drop a cookie on somebody's desk. And I just communicated all of those things. Hmm. I, I care about you and, and, uh, and I'm really thankful for you today. I know I was yesterday and I will be tomorrow, but like today I'm so thankful. Here's a cookie. Yeah. So, well, 
I think that stuff's awesome. And I guess, you know, my advice to you right now is don't share this podcast with anybody that you currently work with because (laughs) they're going to be quite upset that you haven't continued that tradition. (laughs) Bro, I've tried. I've tried. It's just different. The cookie, the cookie game. I got refused enough times on cookies that I just, I quit. It's like, okay, guys, I'm not doing cookies. What do I need to bring? Diet Mountain Dew or I'll bring whatever. (laughs) Well, I have whatever you need. Any, um, just as you think back, have there been any influences or good examples of relational leadership that you have learned from and, and followed like over the years, any big influences you can think of? Um, so, so Simon, Simon Sinek's book, leaders eat last was mm. a, was a really big, um, a big influence for me. Um, and the, not to spoil the book, but the idea is in the military, the higher ranking officers let the lower ranking officers eat before them. And then if there's not enough food, the, the higher ranking officers do without, right? Sure. And so this idea that um, I'm always going, I'm, I'm going to serve. And, and once again, the beautiful thing is like, you don't have to be a higher ranking officer to do that. You know, you can, right. you can always let somebody sit a uh, shotgun. You can always, um, you know, if there's... <laughs> If there's a, a really sucky, frustrating project, you can volunteer for it. There's, you can find ways to serve. And, uh, but yeah, man, Simon Sinek's, all, all of Simon Sinek's stuff is gold, but that le- Leaders Eat Last, I thought was a great, because one of the things he challenges is this is a, it's a, it's a long play, right? It's not a short, it's not a short play. It's a, it's a long, <laughs> it's a long play that I've got your back and you'll have my back. If it's, if I ever, if it's needed, you're going to have my back and, it, and I'm not tricking you into having my back. You just will. Cause that's how right. we are. That's how humans are. Yeah. That's how relationships. That's work. How, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's good, man. That's good stuff. Um, that's really cool. So, you know, wrapping things up here, um, if you were, you know, in a room right now talking with a handful of, of business owners and team leaders, uh, you know, and there was a, a banner over the top of the room that said, you know, relational leadership seminar. What What's your key takeaways? What are the, the the one, two, three things that you're trying to get them to walk away with? Uh, I, I would say genuinely care about your people and probably probably start there. Um, so if and it's it's one time I had a, I had a leader that every time the same time every week would come by my cube and and ask me how I was doing and I knew he had a reminder on his calendar yeah. and so. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you genuinely care about the, the health and livelihood of your employees. And, and so I think that changes if, if maybe one of them is struggling with something, I think it gives you a, a softer approach uh, to address them. And, hmm. and, um, and, it, and it depends. I was, Ryan, I was going to say this, if I haven't already said it, like, so I, I think this would be, you, you have to, if you're a small or medium business owner, you have to have certain targets. But mm-hmm. I think I think some of your targets should be: do my do my employees feel supported mm-hmm. and heard and loved? Yeah. So whenever I left, whenever I left the my previous company, I, I have the email here. Here's the. You care if I just say the email that I wrote because I think it's no. Very go telling. for it. Go for it. Um, and it has an office quote in it, and so that's that's helpful. Perfect. So, yeah. Because uh, I think I think this kind of summarizes what I would what I would say. So I said, well, it's it's truly been an honor and a privilege to work here alongside you all. We've accomplished a lot in the last three and a half years that I've served on the team. And then I, I list out the different projects we did. We reduced mm. millions of dollars of of expense. We you know um, improved all these efficiencies. I crack a joke about one of the one of our ladies got a new nose ring. Uh, we, you know, we, we launched new business intelligence reporting platforms. We did some really cool things, but then I said, Mm. I said, but the the memories that I will take with me are the friendships and the camaraderie that we've shared. And I do hope that I have served you all well, but most importantly, I hope that you have, have felt loved, heard and supported during my tenure here. So, and then the the office quote is, uh, this is from Jim. You'll, you know that already, Ryan, but if, if, if you're a family stuck on a lifeboat in the middle of the ocean, one parent might want to just keep rowing. But if the other parent wants to play a game, it's not because they're crazy. It's because they're doing it for the kids. Yeah. And so I think I was the one playing the game with the kids while the other leader was rowing the boat. Huh. And I'm not crazy. Um, I'm trying to take care of, I'm trying to take care of the kids. Yeah. And, um, and so my, you know, regardless of all the accomplishments that you have as a company or you have as a leader, 
for mm. me, all of it's a wash if my employees don't feel loved, heard, and supported. Yeah. But if, if, if they feel loved, heard, and supported, then, then I'm walking out of there smiling, feeling accomplished. Um, and to, yeah. of course, you can nuance that with, yeah, but we've got to grow. We do have to grow revenue. We do. <laughs> but yeah. for, for me, if you want me on the team, like, here's what I'm going to focus on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Well, man, I love that. Um, and, and that goes to show even more like how important a team, like a, a yeah. true team is and how it's just not one person running the show, but it's a team effort yes. and everybody brings their own strengths and, and values to the team uh, to add to it and create something that is healthy, that can grow, that people actually enjoy and find purpose in, and that makes a, an impact in whatever industry you might yeah. find yourself in. So I love that. Um, that email is phenomenal. Uh, mm. Gosh, like need a, I may get that from you. We'll like put that in the show notes so people can just copy and paste it to their own companies. Cause that, I mean, that's an incredible gesture when you're, and leading. I cried as I sent it. I cried. You know. and <laughs> yeah. that's okay. And that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but, but there's no way that the people that receive that didn't feel sure. loved and supported. Sure. And I think that's such a, an incredible way to, to leave with grace and dignity and honor those people. Um, and so, man, just super cool. Kudos on that. And, um, and yeah, this is, I've loved this a great conversation and I think a lot of people will enjoy, uh, listening to it. And at this point in the episode have enjoyed listening to it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So man, uh, any, any closing thoughts? I think I'm good. I think I've said it all. Awesome. Well, man, thanks again for taking the time to, to be on and, uh, to chat a little bit about this stuff. And uh, yeah, just appreciate you and your thoughts. You too. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for listening today to the Invincible Teams podcast. We'd like to challenge you now to go share this episode with a team leader or business owner you know that might like it. And just like every podcast, we appreciate all the subscribes, likes, shares, reviews, and five-star ratings you can give us. And like we always say, we believe that every team should reach their potential and that if we get intentional, our teams can become invincible. See you next time.